sing again It's been a long dark night Never see the morning light A new day has come I thought my dreaming was done My world turned over and torn inside out My heart was so broken But it just cracked wide open A new day has come Hey, I'm Brandon Lee, thanks for joining me, and today we're gonna to be recreating daylight with the Nanlite Forza 500, which is the light that you see right here. So this is a chip on board 500 watt LED light. It's one of the brightest chip on board lights on the market. And on the light, I have the FL20G Fresnel lens. And what's special about this lens for the Forza 500 is that it focuses a lot further than lenses for other lights. It starts off at 45 degrees, it goes all the way into 10 degrees, at least officially 10 degrees, but there's actually a few more ticker marks beyond 10 degrees, which means I might actually be getting more of a seven or an eight degree spot out of this lens, which is incredible because that means that the light is that much brighter in the center and there's less fall off to the sides, which gives me more control and also lets me throw it over a longer distance. All right, now I'm gonna take this light out in the real world and see how it performs. And I want to rise this up pretty high because even if I'm simulating like late afternoon sun, the sun is usually pretty high up in the sky. So I've spotted in the beam as much as possible so it just hits this window and doesn't spill too much onto the wall because obviously if the light spills onto the wall, it doesn't end up in our scene and it's just wasted light. We already have all that other ambient light coming from the other windows and this light is just giving us a bright sun hit on the wall to make it feel more alive, to make the scene more interesting looking. The Forza 500's angle is unfortunately directly opposite where the real sun is, giving us shadows that conflict with each other. We have a world of two suns, and since this isn't Star Wars, I'm gonna need to get rid of one of the suns. So I'm gonna get rid of the real sun's direct beams with this five-in-one reflector, just by jamming it in like that. That's my high-tech solution. So now we're gonna get indirect light from the real sun coming through the window, which should be very neutral in our scene. So now the reflector is blocking the real sun, which allows the Forza 500 to be the only source of direct light in the scene. For this shot, I wanted to put the light in a spot where the light stand wouldn't quite fit. So what I did was I put a mirror up there instead, and then I shined the light into the mirror and it bounced back toward my face. And this not only solved the problem of fitting the light in that tight spot, but it also increased the apparent distance from the source to me, the subject, which makes it look more like real daylight. Now I've taken that mirror trick one step further to create the scene that you're seeing here in my living room. Right now, it's nighttime. This is 100% artificial light from the Forza 500 and the Forza is actually all the way out in the hallway, shooting through the kitchen into a series of reflectors, creating the light that you see in this scene. I've got three mirrors set up. And they're shining into a fake plant and then projecting this pattern that you see on the wall here. as well as this on the table, this bit of scattered light here, and the additional light on the floor there. I wanted to add some randomness to the reflection of light so it looked a little bit more realistic. To create the fill light throughout the room without using additional lights, I put my five-in-one reflector behind the mirrors and I let the light bounce off of the silver side of the reflector. So that gives me a softer ambient light that mixes really well with the light from the mirrors because it's all coming from the same original source. And as a final touch, I turned on the practical light, which was already here in the room, but I dimmed it all the way down to minimum because I wanted the light from the Forza 500 to appear to be a lot brighter, as sunlight would. So that's how I created the scene that you see here.
Next, I wanted to create a really strong beam of light through a window, so I waited until it got a bit darker, and then I aimed the Forza 500 into the kitchen, creating the light pattern that you see here. The darker room made the light seem brighter. Then I sprayed a whole bunch of atmosphere aerosol haze to make the beam of light visible on camera. And this combination of haze and backlight and a darker ambience was key to making the sunbeam really strong. When it got dark, I aimed the Forza 500 into the workshop and I set my camera's white balance to 3200K, which gave me a cold blue moonlight look. Then I changed it to a sunset look just by switching the white balance of the camera to 7000K. So this light was really a lot of fun to use. And one thing I like about it is that for the amount of brightness that you get out of it, it's actually very compact. The light fixture itself weighs only about five pounds, 2.2 kg, and it's just a small compact square, unlike the Aperture 300D, which is longer. It's more oblong like this. And I felt like the Forza 500 was overall more balanced on the light stand when I was rising it up really high. One thing that wasn't so easy was the double yoke that you see here. So basically every time that you want to change the position of the light, you have to undo two of these controls and then you move it and then you have to screw it back in on both sides. The Fresnel lens is also pretty compact once you close the lens down all the way and you close the barn doors too. So that's not that bad to travel with. I could easily fit this in the provided bag that it comes with or just another bag in my kit. The least compact part of the Forza 500 is the power control box that you see here. All of these chip on board lights have them. The one for the Forza 500 happens to be especially huge. I think because they're making room for giant V-Lock batteries on the back if you're not powering it by AC. So this is kind of a big heavy burden to take around, but I feel like the size of this was sort of a necessary evil to keep the size of the fixture small. So I'd rather have the weight be down here at the bottom of my light stand than have it be on the light fixture itself. Otherwise, as far as the quality of the light goes, you can judge for yourself, you saw all the footage. To me, it looked just like sunlight. It mixed in perfectly, so that's great. I didn't have to put any gels or anything on the light to make it match. And as far as the light output goes, it's basically best in class, meaning you're not gonna get anything much brighter than this in a similar form factor or at a similar cost. If you need a source that's a lot brighter than this, you're probably gonna have to move up to using actual HMIs, like an REM18. And when you're using a light of that class, you're probably gonna also need a grip truck and a crew to go along with it. So for smaller operations, for single man crews, run and gun kind of scenarios, you're not gonna do much better than the Forza 500. There's really nothing else this bright in its class currently. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please click like, subscribe, and that notification bell so you're the first to know when I post my next video. All right, I'll see you next time.